I'm Chase. And I'm Timothy. And this is Customer Service. Timothy Grindle, how we doing, my man? Uh, okay. Had to turn on the podcast voice there. Yeah. We're, we're coming a little bit out of the weeds. We're not as ill as we were the last pod that came out. Um, thank you to everybody. It was like, hey, man, you guys sound fucking rough. <laughs> yeah. I feel better, like... Yeah. Uh, physically a little bit mm-hmm. but it's not it's not fully gone either yeah it's we, really lingering we were just talking before this but Michan has one of those gua sha it's like a jade roller kind of thing dude that's re- it's really sick i wish that i got the same enjoyment from doing it myself as i do when she does it it feels way more why is she doing it for you i don't know the i don't know the the routes you know what i mean would be impossible to memorize all those cra- all those crazy <laughs> well, all those four movements that you can do. I think it's I think it's one of those things where like I don't know. It's like nice. It's nice when like your grandma scratches your hair. You know what I mean? Rather than if you scratch. Oh your yeah, own I hair. know what you mean, pal. <laughs> my grandma scratched my head all the time. Specific yeah. reference. <laughs> I want one of those things that like I've seen them. Whatever they did, to, like pull out the brains um, for mummies or whatever. I want you stick up your nose. I want one of those, whatever that tool was that they had in hieroglyphics that I can stick into my nose, into my sinuses, and yank out whatever this is. Yeah, it's driving me crazy. You you gotta wonder what it looks like up there. Mm. Is it solid? I don't know. You know me and mummies. I can't go too far down this. Too too afraid of them. <laughs> hey buddy, hey, don't too be, scared of them. Don't <laughs> I can only go so far down that rabbit hole before, yeah. I'm, before I'm getting too nervous. It's you like kn- whenever I watch one of my classic. Uh, you know, guys who are like technically the uh, they're fucking obsessed with those pyramids, yeah. and uh, it, and then they'll go inside of them, and I'm like, nah, I don't want to, I don't, don't wanna, I don't want to look inside of them. <laughs> don't go in there, dude. <laughs> too weird. Yeah, <laughs> might be a mummy coming out of any corner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I've like been uh, I've been watching this new show in the realm of that. It's on HBO. It's not new, and it's very much like it might as well be ancient aliens. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But it's about like random abandoned places. Mm-hmm. Um, so. For whatever that's worth, we're on the subject of. What's kinda, it called? I think it's like abandoned, like remote, abandoned remote, or something like that. It seems like one of those things they added to HBO Max of like eh, acquire it, I guess, just so we. Yeah, have no, it. it was it was probably floating around in the ether of, you know, freebies, free agents, if you yeah, will. Yeah. And they were like, I don't know, twenty bucks, we'll take it. You know, <laughs> stuff that used to play at three a.m. on like TBS. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I really, I really like it. Been watching it. A lot of you know, just remote abandoned things since yeah. finishing the True Detective season. Which did are you in it now? I don't. Here's how I came into it. Somewhere halfway through. <laughs> I just yeah. I hit play yeah. on True Detective yeah. and I thought I'll give it a try. Uh-huh. I wasn't excited about it. I don't know why. I sort of like come around negatively on True Detective as a whole. If I'm being honest mm-hmm. with you, mm-hmm. like I'm just like I think we might have idealized what that was. I don't know if it was that good. Well, season one got a reaction that was nothing short of feverish. You know what I well, mean? Well, I like, just think because it was different at uh-huh. the time. Uh-huh. But now that I've seen, I don't know. Now I think back on it, and I'm like, might have been a little self involved <laughs> you think but i don't know yeah. i haven't watched rewatched it to be fair but um regardless i just was like i'll give this one a try i've watched all the other ones why not i even watched the third terrible season even though people say we, we don't need to go down this road yeah. again um but i uh i started it or i would, thought i was starting it <laughs> so i hit play but hbo max or whatever does that uh-huh. weird thing where if you hit play it just goes to whatever episode you were left on which yeah is it doesn't yeah because it doesn't look like that's what it's going to do but because it thought I had already been watching, it didn't show like the previous episode mm-hmm, or anything. Mm-hmm. It just started. Yeah, none and, of the none of the catch up, so you wouldn't mm-hmm. even realize. And I was watching, and Abby goes, "What are you watching?" I said, "True Detective." And she goes, "What episode?" And I was like, first one." She goes, "She was kind of weird about it." And I was like, "I don't know." It's always like kind of like a mysterious bag uh-huh, show, uh-huh, or uh-huh. they expect a lot out of you, basically. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? It's not like- I will say the first episode, for in your defense, they do kind of expect a lot out of you. It kind of starts, it really... Well, I know the show's cadence. Yeah. I was like, they just, you know, I'm supposed to assume a lot here. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I didn't think about it. To be honest with you, I finished it and, and Abby was like, you definitely watched, that's like the fifth episode or whatever. Or no, I don't know if it was fifth, but like third. third. Or fourth, yeah. And I was like... I don't feel like I need to go back to catch up. I know what's going uh-huh, on. You uh-huh, know what I mean? Like, uh-huh. there's no, it's not that the plot isn't so crazy. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm doing a lot of ghost shit, which I was, I didn't like that. And then I've, I've since I did finish it. I never went back to the first episodes. I just, <laughs> yeah. finished, like I said, I don't think I needed them. I yeah. know what's going on. I was yeah. able to follow the thing. Yeah. You're not gonna like my review of this show. Tell me. 
Because I feel like you liked it. Um, I I will I'll say I started out liking it more in the beginning. As it wrapped up, I'm happy with some of the ways they wrapped it up, or at least that they did wrap up some of the thoughts, you know? Um, I could go either way. It, it, I don't feel super strongly about it. I the, like the setting. I like the Arctic nature of it. I think that's cool. The whole time, I was like, why would anybody live here? That's you know what I mean. It Besides is really being born here. It's it's remarkably uh, not friendly to the body. It feels no. I mean, even the fact that it's like night for two weeks in a row. It's like yeah. that alone would be enough, even if it was nice weather. Yeah. And I mean, and then they're like, oh, and also it's a blizzard like most of the time. And yeah. You're like why? <laughs> yeah. Go, just go somewhere else. You've got another place to go. Yeah. Um, the I think the acting might be the worst acting I've ever seen. It's you not not a fan of Jodie Foster in this one, huh? I don't. Here's the thing. Maybe it's not Jodie Foster. It could be the writing, but the delivery is so. It, it's like it's like high school theater delivery. I thought I thought the same thing when it started out, and I was like, oh, it's a campy. There's a campy vibe to it, and maybe that's not the case. But I thought my first reaction of Jodie Foster, I was like, what's she doing here? Because I thought Jodie Foster was like a pretty good actress, right? Like. She's been in a lot of stuff we've seen. It makes seen. you think, you know, like, yeah. where it was the other stuff not yeah. good. Yeah. But it's like every delivery is identical. Yeah. No matter how elevated the scenario, it's the same acting, no mm-hmm. matter what. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. open latch. Hey, come here. Where are you? Hey, where are you? And it's like, <laughs> this is like how, like, uh, if, you know, if you had a G.I. Joe with a button on the back where he did, where he did like, catchphrases. Yeah. That might as well have been yeah, Jodie Foster. They were just the like, six. hit the button so she says the right thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just, it felt so. Yeah robotic and ru- i don't know dude i like i was really it was making me audibly laugh certain deliveries yeah. of things because yeah. it was so i will say I deadpan i don't know it's just like there was no inflection no i i agree with you there's uh, no subtlety kenny powers brother you know yeah <laughs> yeah his dumb ass is in it mm-hmm. that guy's makes sense he was kenny powers brother but um yeah i just really i think i then you know look to be fair, I'm going to give the, the fair out of that. Maybe I didn't have enough context for certain things. Uh-huh. I certainly was not confused by the story. Um, even the parts they wanted you to be confused by, I was like, I don't, this isn't like that deep. I'm with you here. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it was like, oh, so it was all just like a mistake. And they were like, yeah, basically. Yeah. <laughs> like, who cares? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, it, like, it, and I don't think that's even a spoiler. That's vague enough. But it's like, uh-huh. it just felt like it was like, all right. Yeah. No, I liked it. I liked it. Didn't uh, need to do any of this, basically. It kind of made the whole thing like, didn't really need to write this even, <laughs> the way yeah. you wrapped it up. Yeah, it was definitely a little confusing. It was definitely a little confusing. I don't know. But It was not... I didn't care about it. I'll watch any anything in that setting, though, dude. I really I am know. fascinated by just weird, deep, remote I would have rather I don't than know. just do a documentary <laughs> about that area. Yeah. It seems hey. weird enough. You know what I mean? Topical to this, have you started the new Payne Lindsay podcast, Up and Vanished, the new season? No, I I, I, watched, I listened to the first season of Up and Vanished. The first I, I one never, was the one that went. took place in Atlanta. It was a like teacher, hometown, Tara Grinstead. Right? Yeah. Yeah, and he like, yeah. interviews his like, grandma and stuff. Maybe. I feel like that was the first one. I, I mean, I, I listened to it when it came out. But yeah. there's a new season just came out Friday. There's two episodes. It also takes place in deep-ass Alaska. It's really weird how, what, what do people True get, Detective how do get wrapped up in into these things you know, I, yeah i don't know maybe he has a plug at hbo and was like listen if you are trying to be topical we're gonna have a show it's gonna come out everybody's gonna alaska be on the mind and then you can release your pod but um that's it's, worth listening to it's also like whenever if you were telling me like somebody up and vanished there i'm like no they didn't they died somewhere for some reason and the snow covered them up it'd be impossible to yeah 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 <laughs> you know what i mean yeah Case closed. Case closed. <laughs> easy peasy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's probably the blizzard. Yeah. It, wh- I don't know how anyone's living out here, I don't understand. Crazy. Yeah. Absolutely nuts. If they all died, you'd be like, well, I mean, that makes sense. It's blow freezing all the time, and it's mostly nighttime. Yeah. And it's snowing. It never stops. Yeah. It snows like for two days in a row here, and I'm like, I I hate this. I yeah. can't. I don't know how people live like that. So. Do you think we're going to have a spring them. like we had last year? Remember how it rained for a month straight? I hope so. I, I do made too. everything so green and mm-hmm. nice, and it was like summer forever. Mm-hmm. So I'm fine. I with liked that. it because we never get rain here. Yeah, like when I went hiking, the grass was as tall as me. Yeah, which you never see. Yeah, but also, bunch of flowers I, and stuff. I kind of like it brown too. At the same time, I think it's there's, I think it's pretty. Really? Mm-hmm. Mm, I love when everything's lush and shit. I like when it's nice and dry. Yeah, nice and Cleaner. crispy. <laughs> yeah, you're not gonna get anything in your shoes when you walk around. Yeah, yeah. It's like that. Yeah, you don't got. It's like I've grown to. I aesthetically, I like it. Yeah, it's nice. 
Yeah. So we'll see. This is not topical to anybody else but us. No, it's all good. Um, what's going on with you besides ending True Detective? Um, I set up my uh, my grow room in my closet. So I got a bunch of seeds that I'm starting. I indexed all of my seeds into a PDF. I have 75 varieties of things. If 50% of them work out, I will have still plenty of shit. So I know that really interests you. <laughs> but no, that, I'm, I'm, do your thing. <laughs> that'd, be about the, that'd be the most uh, recent... Recent development. Took it pretty easy this weekend. What about you? You, you need to take it easy this weekend to recover from the last two times. Hey. I've asked you what you did on the weekend. You said you didn't leave. Yeah, took it easy. <laughs> yeah. I just need to do a little recovery this week. Yeah. No, I, we we, uh, we set up the... We finished uh, finishing that table. I mean, you made a PDF, so... I made a PDF. Yeah. Uh, Not nothing. No. But yeah. just chilled. I haven't been to Home Depot or anything in a while. Feeling like I'm missing there. I don't know, man. No, really, nothing. Nothing super eventful. Mm-hmm. We're making lasagna tonight, so I made a vegan. Well, I didn't make it. Abby did. I ate it. Yeah. <laughs> I assume you made like a vegan gluten free lasagna that was slapped. Yeah. One time, Michelle also made a vegan lasagna that I thought was stellar, and I didn't even realize it until after the fact. You do lentils I'm being in it. Hundred percent honest. But no. Uh, no zucchini and uh, I think a little bit of eggplant and hmm. gluten free pasta, and then the like that like kite hill or whatever. Yeah, no. The ricotta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kite I don't like better Kite actually good. than regular because I don't. I've told you I'm not. Yeah, you're I'm, not a ricotta, I'm a ricotta guy. Skeptic. Yeah. Um, and it was good. Yeah, it was good. You make the red sauce, or have yeah. you made the red sauce? Uh, well, that might have been jarred. I don't know. Actually, I didn't yeah. ask her. Um, but yeah, it's you know to be honest with you, I, I always do this whenever I start and I eat anything vegetarian. I don't like anything that's meat more than vegetarian. Like, there's not. I can't think of one example of that. Hmm. Chicken nuggets. Better when they're. I like the fake morning star. Better. Morning star buffalo chicken yeah. nuggets are absolutely stellar. Whenever I've eaten a burger, I'm like, I'd, I'd enjoy a veggie burger as long as it's a real veggie burger. Not, I don't like the fake meat. I want it to be like a like, black bean patty or, yeah, or something yeah, of the something like, like yeah. something of that yeah. nature. You know what I mean? But once it's like that, I'm really there for the condiments anyway. So who cares? Yeah, and no, I'm with you. I don't I'm notice it. By the time I've eaten a veggie burger, I'm like, this cup, if this was meat. It would not have been better other than my stomach will hurt worse. Yeah, you know what I mean. Whenever I eat like pasta, I just put the zucchini noodles in. I'm like, I got the same thing out of it. The bonza the ones? No, dude. Well, those are maybe the no, chickpea ones. I just make it ones. myself. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, you make zucchini noodles? Yeah, you just get the little spiraler thing. Huh. Oh, I know what you're How talking about. Yeah, yeah. The sound, the sound is what did it. Yeah. So it's like I don't, I don't, I could, I don't know why I don't just do it. Yeah. You know, other than like being nervous about like then you have to like be a, pay attention to protein intake and stuff, but. I just don't care. I don't think there's anything that I like I, so much. Here's that, the thing, bro. I think what you do is great. And I think that what you do, a lot of people could learn from. Where it's like, cool, if you don't want to eat as much meat, like, you don't have to, but you don't have to call yourself a thing. You don't have to belong to some certain club. I've said this before. I don't want to, I don't want to commit anymore because I've done that plenty of times yeah. in my life. And the problem is then you have to go to a restaurant where everyone, it's like a business meeting or something. And then everyone's like... You got to order this, the whatever it is. You know what I mean? No, I'm not going to order a steak because I just, there's just no point. Really no one should waste their money. I don't enjoy it that much. I like cooking them, but I don't like eating mm-hmm, them. Mm-hmm. But like by the time, you know what I mean? Like I, I just don't care. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and I don't want to be rude at the thing. So it's like, yeah, just order the chicken. That's that, that's what's popular here. I like chicken just fine. Everyone, yeah. I mean, vegetarians like chicken. You just, yeah. you know, inoffensive. Unless, unless you forget about it or something, you know, yeah. I mean, who cares? But it, it, on average, I just don't think I prefer it. No, it doesn't. Again, you don't need to belong to some larger club for you to feel good about well, what you're on. eating. Hold on, guy with an X on his foot. Hey, now. That you was past I mean? life. <laughs> yeah, but I'm saying like... I'm saying I've learned from it too. We can also admit that that's cool. It was cool in the moment. Yeah, it was cool in the moment. I think well, it was being, it was good for me in that moment too. I either think but I'm also an be, adult. Either you were straight edge then and then broke and then still think it's cool just because it was cool mm-hmm. at the time because it was like tough. Yeah. It's not tough when you're like in your 30s, <laughs> but or you stayed edge the whole time and then you you get an all time pass. Yeah, you get an all time pass. You know, uh, Michan has an old piece of straight edge merch. It's a foundation long sleeve. You ever listen to foundation? Oh, yeah. Atlanta really like kind of sounds like a brick being smashed mm-hmm. through a head. It's like so it's heavy. Yeah. Um, and she was wearing it the other day. It's like her like around the house. And I was like. I might have to start wearing that again. It says like foundation, straight edge. Mm-hmm. And there's like a, a graphic on the back. And I was like, this is, it's tight. Straight edge is undoubtedly cool. I just grew out of it, but I think it was good for that Being time. Being an adult who then, cho- like if you were in your 20s and chose to then be that and then talk about it a lot. Yeah. as a different thing. You know what? Because I know some adult, lifers. You weren't like punching each other and pushing each other around about it. 
Uh uh-uh. uh. So, you know, not, yeah. neither was anybody that's that. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's what I'm saying. yeah. Like, so it's okay. 12 through 18, pretty cool. And then if you stuck with it, you're fine. Yeah. If you didn't stick with it, then you're out. You can't go back. No, I think if you if you're 30 and you want to be straight edge, just be sober. That would be the term. Yeah. Just it's be a sober. Thing. Yeah. You just you had to get sober. <laughs> yeah. And that and that's equally as valid. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, if you if you're a lifer, you were edge 17 on. Just like cool. going to AA is the same as like hanging out in a Taco Bell. Yeah. Lot being like. <laughs> Man, fuck all these. Uh, you know, fuck yeah. the industry as you're eating from, yeah. uh, you know, cheesy bean and rice burrito. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Extra cheese. Yeah. Hell yeah. But. Well, I don't know. There was another thing. I don't know what we're driving at here, but <laughs> I was saying the other day, a friend oh, oh, texted okay. me and I called him out because his wife now borrowed a, this was in like freshman year of college, borrowed a have heart hoodie. I mean, a sweatshirt from me. Yeah. It's the one with the classic logo that said like Boston Straight Edge. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Is it gray with red letters? It was green. Okay. It was like a dark green. Yeah. And I said, does she still have that? And and he was like, why do you want me to ask her? I'm like, I just wanted to know where it's at because she's the last person I knew that had it. She borrowed it at like a, was over at my house and hanging out at a party and, you know, borrowed it. And uh, he was like, no, but actually now she wants me to tell you that her friend has it. She still wears it. And I'm like, can you get it back? Yeah. And I was like, because I think it might be, I don't know if it's worth anything. Turns out I looked it up. I could just buy a new one. Yeah. But it's not the same. No, it's not the to same. To be fair, that one is probably like a medium or something, and that's not, I'm not going to wear. Yeah. No. I, tight as hell. Exactly. Exactly. I was definitely sweatshirt. buying medium or I large I may buy college. a new one, though, now thinking about it. Yeah. Now that I know that I could. I have many a band hoodies lost to time or ex-girlfriends. I have an American Nightmare hoodie. I don't know where it is. I have to assume it's... Which one? The AN one? No, I never had the zip. It was just a black pullover with American Nightmare. American is arched, red lettering, white outline. Just like standard... Was it a... Am I remembering correctly that there was one that was like candy? Um, That was the cover for... One of the records, it's a bunch of candy hearts. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah and it has yeah, like yeah. Love American on it and shit. I remember seeing that one a lot. I didn't have that one. Dope. Yeah. Um, I had a carry on hoodie somewhere. A lot of these might just I definitely be at my like mom's house somewhere too. You know what I'm saying? The graphic. Carry on did not have the best graphics. No, they did not. You know what I mean? No. Awesome I had, band, but not the best. I had a burgundy carry on, a life less plagued, and then like the crowd shot black and white in the back. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Kids stage dive and shit. Sick. Um, that's, but, that's the icon. That's the coolest type of. I think I need to order a Carry On or American Nightmare hoodie, but maybe the next like merch thing we should do it should be like a hardcore thing. A hardcore, like, it's right. like a, yeah. a ripping hardcore. Yeah, canoe we could Club do that in the bold logo. Well, so, no, somebody somebody made the Canoe Club uh, poster. Remember? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It looked like it looked like a, looked like, a uh, like a cursed album cover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. cool. So that'd be cool. Uh, yo, there was another thing we cooked this weekend that I wanted to tell you that I think you'll like. It's Allison Roman. Shout out, Allison Roman. Just really, really. I won't. Go, I'm not moving on in this conversation to you. At least admit that I put you onto this. You did. Yeah. Long ago, you, you, you were like, I'm "Hey, old... hey, we're Allison Roman people here." And yeah. I said, it's "Okay, I don't Allison know Roman her. Family. We're a Boz household, is what I said." But changed your tune though. right? Changed our tune. Absolutely. Michan picked up the uh, what's it called? Nothing fancy. I think. Yeah. Um, we did this roasted radish dish. It's like roasted radishes with the greens on top still. You just mm-hmm. toss them in olive oil, salt, pepper, mm-hmm. and then you make green goddess butter, you know? Mm-hmm. Parsley, uh, chives, this, that, and the other. Buddy. I'm telling you, favorite thing I've cooked this year so I'm far. I'm a big radish guy. You are? I, I, yeah. Oh, I love radishes. Uh, I, 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 I didn't feel strongly one way or another about them until this dish, but man, I'm f- really fucking stoked on it. It was so good. Um, we're kind of into this like like simple grocery situation where mm-hmm. I don't want to eat anything where there's too much cooking, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like, like everything is just sort of like a few things. Yeah. I, I, I want to like try that for a little while. Well, it's nice when you know all the ingredients in each thing. Yeah. And it not be like, I don't want to have to like do a bunch of work. It's sort of like, other than like doing a little this or that to something, mm-hmm. it's mostly just like, yeah, you look at it and you're like, I know exactly what that is. There's nothing more to it. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying yeah. to do that for a little while. Yeah. Just uncomplicate things. Yeah. I'm, I'm with you. No dude. crazy cooking. Maybe do one. We're trying to maybe do one a week where you do something a little more involved. Yeah, but for the most part, it kind of just being like quick, easy, healthy, very simple, like three ingredient type of things. Yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. Now. I feel like that's a trend now too. Is, is like, it? yeah, I feel like I started me, it, but it's like last yeah, week. <laughs> <laughs> last week. I just think I just think that's that's the best way to eat food, dude. Is like if you can 
see all of the ingredients. There's nothing that you don't understand, and you can just get it at Safeway. You don't need to go to some specialty yeah. place. Just like mine comes down to that. We have a kid, and yeah. it's really hard to cook the same yeah, food for totally. the kid that you're eating. It's hard to do, especially if you want to have like any certain type of diet or anything like mm-hmm, that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, you, so cooking a lot of stuff is sort of a pain in the ass. Mm-hmm. Storing it because you never eat it all mm-hmm. is a pain in the ass. Yeah, I kind of just want to make everything like. I don't want to like cook so much that like, oh, I stunk up the house. I got to clean all these fucking pots. I got to do all yeah. the dishwasher every single night. I'm trying to get away from that kind of like creating stress for no reason. Yeah. How you know would you saying? guys feel about making just making a big pot of rice every couple of days and you got rice with oh, I get eggs the, and chicken? You know, or, that's you know that's what I basically eat, bro. I, yeah. First of all, I get the minute, those minute rices from Costco. Yeah, brother. Those are the best. The, I don't care if it's maybe it's wasteful because of the plastic or whatever. They're perfect because it's the perfect amount. If yeah. I make rice on my own, you always make too much. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Every amount that you, every measuring thing is too much rice yeah. and I'll just eat it if it's there. Yeah. I'll eat it. I'll eat it out of a, you know, a Tupperware at yeah. midnight. Yeah. Plain. Yeah. So I can't, just, I don't want to have extra. I just want to have that amount because it's like the perfect, yeah. Yeah. Por- you know, portion. Yeah. Put that down with like a couple eggs on top and, you know, maybe a vegetable. Like a, Bro, like, I'm with do, you. I like a, do cucumbers with a little sesame oil and you Yeah. Know, you stuff, guys you know? have that in the fridge. It smells I good. I do a lot of that. hmm Easy. How do you feel about a tuna steak, bro? I like tuna steak. What was that? Again? Just we picked. We picked up a. a, a I, I really. I like. Simply prepared fish, salmon, tuna, fucking y'all eat tilapia, I just want whatever. Fish with lemon and salt. I, yeah, I just want yeah. like just regular, you know. So and Michelle necessarily doesn't lean towards it. She wasn't a huge fan of the tuna steak. However, it's it's kind of a hard thing to cook too. I feel like I'm always either overdoing it or underdoing it, and there's like a. You know well, I mean? you know it's me. Kind of complicated. I cooked it all the way through. So, <laughs> well, <that's>, so I, <laughs> know, I know why she didn't like it though, because that's kind of like a. But it's a lot of chewing. I loved it, bro. Absolutely loved it. You made tuna jerky. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it might as well have been tuna jerky, bro. Yeah, <laughs> but white rice, tuna, some soy sauce, a little sriracha. I could eat that for every single meal confidently. No, no, no questions asked. Loved it. I pretty much want like rice, eggs, sesame seeds. That's yeah. I'm, fuck yeah. I'm pretty good you there. Hard you know boiler I mean? saying. Yeah, I'll do, or like a fry. Either way, mm-hmm. if, you, if you want the yolk or you know, mm-hmm. whatever. I, I don't, can. One thing I don't like that people love. I don't like jammy eggs. Though when you kind of like not quite hard boil, but I don't like it. Well, the white is hard, is boiled. <laughs> no, I just like. I, I know for some reason when it's in the middle, I'm not interested. Hmm. It either is hard boiled or it's like a fried, so it's runny that way or something. Interesting. Whatever. See, I can never get the fry right, and you end up with the. You know, I don't like to say this, but like the snotty bits around the outside of the yolk. I don't yeah. necessarily love that, but I, I don't mind I do a jammy a egg. Job. We had one at uh, Lawson's. It's I had okay. one, rather. I don't know what it is. It's just the texture is kind of gross to me. Yeah. And yeah. I don't know why the in-between is gross, yeah. but the other versions are fine. But yeah. Yeah. It is what it is. Yeah. And I love a hard-boiled egg. I love it, dude. Here, let me ask you a question. Why does it feel like you could eat eight hard-boiled eggs n- without skipping a beat like they're chips? But if you give me a bowl of eight well, scrambled hold, eggs. Hold on, hold on, hold on. This is, what do you mean? This is something I've wanted to work through all, for a while. As, every aspect of what you just said, I don't think I agree with. I don't. I, I'm shaking my head like, you know what I'm I've saying. I've never eaten a hard-boiled egg and thought, I could eat f- five more of these. Really? No, I feel like, I you, feel like, you know, it, like a few, maybe. I, I, feel like I, could, I feel like I could eat 10 hard-boiled eggs without dense. skipping a beat. Like, it wouldn't even I register disagree. I think when you're scrambling an egg, you can scramble like eight eggs, and you're like, this isn't that much. Oh, I think if you see the volume of it. It's a whole bowl. I don't know. So. I don't know. I guess we've worked through that in real time, but. What do you think your top three egg preparations are? Scrambled. That's hard, number one? Yeah. What, I love scrambled eggs, man. Yeah. How, how, do you, how do you like them? Like hard scramble or soft scramble? Hard scramble. I don't want runny. I like them. I like a little runny, like pretty really? broken up. Yeah. <laughs> no, I want them. I, I, huh. <laughs> I, like, I do like, do you, what, do you, what do you do with them? You put like a little cornstarch and a little like cold butter in so that it kind of comes at different points. Um. I do them kind of how Paige taught me a while ago. Just do a little olive oil or a little butter or ghee or something, you know? And then I just move them the whole time and then a little olive oil, salt, pepper. I don't want ghee and eggs. Ugh. I, don't, I think it's so ghee inoffensive. Ghee and eggs, like the, it's, all I'm tasting is ghee then. Nothing else has enough of a... I don't think I ever notice ghee. ghee. Oh, it's just like all I taste when it's in things. Huh. Maybe it's like one of those things where it's like... Once you know, you can't. Well, like maybe it's like a... What's the herb people don't like? Cilantro. cilantro. Maybe it's like that. Maybe it's just I taste it more. Like I, I don't mind it in like other cooking when it's like in mm-hmm. with a bunch of strong stuff. Mm-hmm. I understand why you use, you, know, you use a clarified butter. It's fine, but uh, in eggs, I feel like that's I might as well eat the chunk of ghee and be done. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's all I'm gonna taste. Hey, uh, recall to our listeners when you and Bob were in Paris and you had 
some eggs at that nice hotel. Oh my god! So we went. We we're in Paris. <laughs> we really, we really wanted to go to the Ritz because it's like a big, you know, it's uh-huh. it's very fancy. Would that be like the Ritz? The yeah. one that's in Paris is the yeah. Ritz. Well, not. I mean, I don't know what the, the one is. I guess now that I'm thinking about it, but this it's, it's, it's a, a very good it's one. big. Yeah. It's nice. Yeah. And they, if you go onto the first floor, they have like gowns that people have worn there on display and oh, shit. Damn. So we went there at night. On the way home one night after dinner, and I was like, we we're like, well, we'll go in and we'll just kind of see it, just because it'll be cool. Maybe maybe they'd let us sit at the bar. They did not. Um, <laughs> and we saw Tilda Swinton, which is cool. Uh-huh. And we like looked around. And it was you know it's beautiful. And we were like, I think that if we come back here in the morning, we can, we can do breakfast because I don't think you have to be staying here. Blah, blah blah. So we went back. They seemed confused, and they were like, I think I think it's okay. There's not many people in there. I, th- I think it's okay. Yeah. And it's almost like a sir. Do you know where you are? Yeah. And just to be clear, like you know, Bob's doing all right. Yeah. <laughs> we're not. I've been to plenty of fancy places. It's not like you know what I mean. But to yeah. be fair, we were dressed like had Visvam on, but but in in the Ritz, no one gives a shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? We go into the <laughs> dining room. It's a very nice dining room, and it's like they take your bag and are doing the whole like it's like a million people waiting. This is just breakfast. Everyone in there, including children, are in like black tie. Yeah. You know what yeah, I mean? This is yeah. just like and, and beautiful. Dialed. I mean, this is like, this is not just rich. This is ultra rich. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And I'm like, oh my God. We look, <laughs> we look insane. And Bob's got his big boots on. We got, yeah. So, I mean, like, look, everything we're wearing is nice, yeah, obviously. Yeah, sure, sure. But in context, we look like uh-huh. we're we're dressed to work the docks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, I told Bob, I was like, we look like the fucking blues brothers in here. <laughs> and, uh, and I was so self-conscious that it was like, Oh my God, like an egg is like, it was like $40. There's so yeah. one egg. Yeah. Everything all a cart too. Coffee. I had drip coffee, like regular, it was like American coffee as yeah. they called it. I think it was like $18 or something. Shit yeah. like that. I mean, it was like, everything was astronomically expensive. Yeah. One by one. Um, I will say it is. I have never had an egg cooked better in my born life. Uh-huh. I don't think it's going to get better. I think that was the pinnacle. Yeah. So whatever it costs, to be honest with you, would pay it again. Sure. It's fun. It was yeah. But how'd you get it? I don't even remember off the top of my head. If I'm being honest with you, yeah. I think it might. I don't think it was scrambled. I don't remember what I did. To be honest with you, I don't know. Yeah. So it doesn't matter. But it was just like it was all beautiful and everything was like mm-hmm. it was set up and but it was. Demented, yeah. demented. It's probably like a fucking five hundred dollar light breakfast. Yeah, but it was cool. Cool to see everyone. Hell felt, yeah! Felt like a moron, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's cool to be there. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, well, I, there, there was a club in Chicago. I can't remember what it was called now. It was downtown. And one night, somebody had got in their head that we'd go, and I'm like, I don't think we're dressed for this at all. But everyone was in, so we did it. Somehow we got in. I never felt so stupid in my life. I was like, I feel like. I feel like I'm the same age as these people, but I also feel like I look like I'm 12. Yeah. I was like, I don't know. Every time that we bought a drink, I'm like, that might that might bounce in the check, yeah. in, the, in the checking. Yeah. Because <laughs> I was like, everything's so expensive. No one talked to us. I felt like an idiot the whole uh-huh, time. Uh-huh. It's just one of those, it's kind of one of those situations. Where like, it's humbling, man. I was not man. ready for this. You yeah. know what I mean? I think I could have been ready, but th- this was not the way I wanted to do it. Yeah. No, I agree. It was one of those kind of. So, so my, my family was not a country club family. You, you and I, we, a lot of the staff here, we all come from modest backgrounds. You know what I mean? Not country. I would Listen, I was not a member anywhere. You know what I'm saying? That was just not a thing. My mom just recently awesome. became a member of the Elks Club, which is cool. Well, there you go. <laughs> so she's really gassed about that. <laughs> yeah. But uh, my friends, I had some friends that I played soccer with year round and shit, and they were country club families. And I can remember one year... They had become members at the country club because the one in Ashtabula closed, went to uh, two cities over, and they became members of that country club, and we'd go out to dinner with them. And it was probably December, and they were like, hey, we got to go and get whatever you want because you got to spend X amount in the year, or they dock it off your membership next year. You, you have to meet a quota. And I just remember every time going, being like, motherfuckers know that I don't belong here. I'm just with them because I'm their children's friend. <laughs> like This is not where I belong. I'm not going to get up and go pee. Uh, I'm going to order whatever the cheapest thing on the menu is anyway, because I'm not going to fucking have you buy me a grilled steak or something. You know what I mean? But grilled steak, but that, that's yeah. the same feeling of mm-hmm. being like, God damn it, dude. Yeah. This isn't where I'm supposed to be. They all know. Yeah. You they know? all know they can smell it on me. I'm not supposed to be here and I know it just so you know, I'm not trying to fake it. I'm not a fibber. I understand where I, where I belong and it's not yeah. here. So I apologize guys. <laughs> yeah. It's a tough position to be in, but I think that it needs to happen throughout life so that you can 
reassociate. Oh, I mean, totally. I mean, I, I learned a lot from those families and going to country clubs and shit and seeing how they did business. I also think it's like, okay, to be like, I, I, this is not, I was not born into this, but I do know how to operate inside of it if I need to. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But every once in a while, you catch one, you get one off guard, you know, like at the Ritz, and you're like, oh boy, this is not, I don't know anybody who is going to look right here, to be honest with you. If you brought me to the Ritz, I'd say, I'll have the egg. I'm so sorry. <laughs> don't even, <laughs> no, yeah. I'm sorry, but you asked I'm here already. So. Breakfast sandwich or something? <laughs> yeah. You got a bacon, egg, and breeding? cheese? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Let's see if I can do a French accent, salt, pepper, ketchup, but I don't think in English. We should go down that comedy route. <laughs> um, all right, what's going on with the store? We got new cool stuff. Yeah, we, we just got coming in, but where things are going, you know, sometimes the, certain times of year, customs and shipping is just a pain in the ass. I don't think it's something I'm doing on my end, bro. I, I'm pretty good at this importing. You guys business might want to think doing, about so. blaming Chase. No, I think, hey, now, I think I'm doing good. But we got stuff held up in customs. We got story arriving at some point this week. Mm-hmm. We just got Orslo online. So if you are listening to that today, which is Tuesday, it's online. That was mostly restock, a couple new seasonal items. We've got Camille Fortunes on the way. That is dope. That is quite a few SKUs for our first season. And I know you're particularly gassed about that. I love it. I'm really excited about Camille. We've got East Log on the way. Um, again, a fairly a fairly big buy. I'm not sure if it's broken into partials or not, because I didn't import I didn't import East Log, but I'm not sure if it's, it's like a together. half and half yeah. or it's the full thing. I think but it's all together. Got all that. Um, we have a margin restock on the way. Mm-hmm. So if you've been kind of out of your stuff, we've been out of it as well. Big CDG restock. Big on CDG the way. restock on the way, and then Big beams. Oh yeah, you said do beams it. is I'm ready. I'm just waiting because of the, you know, the bank was also closed yesterday. So it's oh yeah, that kind there of. There was stuff. another the thing beams. you mentioned. That wasn't beams. Something you said there was else. something else that was ready. Um, I got stickers on the way. <laughs> so oh yeah, there you go. We're throwing some sticker stickers packs. in a couple orders. You know. Um, yeah, <coughs> it's been it's been good. We're in a. Like you said, it's a weird it's a weird stage where we got the merch drop coming soon. Oh yeah, so. we have our merch drop that'll release sometime next week. Yeah. Um, dope. Well, we got to figure out how we're gonna do it, but yeah, yeah. merch soon. Merch at some point soon. Yeah. Soon. That's cool. We got tees. Yeah. Uh, you'll see. Tees, totes, and hats. Tees, totes, hats. Yep. The, I don't know what it is. I don't care. Yeah. But it's a matter of uh, I'm not sure who's. You know, it's got to go through all the things. This is another option if you're not on Patreon and you want to make sure to get a piece of merch. I would yeah. probably jump on the Patreon. Yeah, bop on over to the Patreon. We've yeah. got a couple other things in, in regards to that that would be running through Patreon here in the next month and a half, too. So I keep... think we're going to run a little flash sale. That It's another yeah. one of those things where if you're not in, you might want to jump in. Cause yeah, a little really flash sale for something one. that you probably won't find otherwise. Um, other plans in that realm that we will kind of unveil as we get closer. Another thing that I'd like to do, I will release this to Discord and Patreon, is for a while you and I have talked about how fun it would be if we had like voice messages from listeners oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you want to ask opinions on your how to dress you want to ask opinions on what we think about g- your relationship anything i don't care we would love we'd love to it's basically just like it's an opportunity to do the same thing we've done in pod questions but you'll be able to like kind of basically call in mm-hmm. and give us your little spiel we'll play it on the podcast yeah because um, the live call thing is not going to happen we do these so sporadically we you want to get on the air this will how you do it don't swear well, I guess you can swear. We don't, don't say anything inappropriate so, yeah. we can make, so I don't have to edit it because I don't want to. Yeah. So in that case, I just won't play it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just like, you, but yeah, anything. I think it'd be fun to answer. If you want, I think dating advice would be funny. Not yeah. that either of us have been on a date in a very long time. <laughs> yeah. um, but I think that would be fun. And uh, yeah, any kind of advice related questions, that's where they're going to go. Yep. You want to know how many times you think you should cuff your jeans, whatever it is. Whatever. We're here to answer those and will play your voice on the air. Which if you did fun. something embarrassing over the weekend and you just need to air just it out, I want to hear about it. Yeah. yeah. So it'll there be fun. Was, um, I used to listen to Jordan Jesse go a lot. Uh, that was a podcast with Jesse Thorne. Yes. I was going to say, I know I've heard of this. Yeah. Um, it's, it's so hard to keep up on every podcast I used to listen to because I used to commute. So I used to be able to really put down a lot. Yeah. So it's harder now, but they had a thing where you called in and you would tell people like momentous occasions, like things that just like funny that happened that you saw. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, I've gotten a couple on the airs throughout the years. One of them that just came to mind though, is, that I don't think I've ever told you is I was driving. You're saying you called in. Yeah. Oh, I cool. Calling funny things I saw. Yeah. <laughs> I was uh, riding the bus home one night. Yeah. And there was like 
it's like stopped, you know, as it stops and people get on and off. And it was one of the ones where it takes a long time to change out because a lot of people yeah. get on, a lot of people get off. Um, I could see this like it looked like a it looked like a showroom for like toilets and sinks and uh-huh. baths and stuff. You sure. know what I mean? Like that kind of thing. And you, you could kind of tell two things because you could see the rooms from the outside, but obviously they can't see each other in the other yep. rooms. So one was clearly a bachelorette party, a bunch of ladies in little fancy dresses mm-hmm. and they had crowns and I was gonna say, yep. do, doing the whole thing. The other room that I could see was male strippers. Huh. Prepping. Okay. So same They're in a different party. room. I don't know that they know that they're over there. Okay. I don't yeah. know if it's a surprise yeah. or they're just prepping. Yeah. And it was like them kind of talking to each other very seriously. All shirt, no shirts on. Yeah. One guy dressed as a fireman. Hell yeah. One guy with like a G string on. They're having a very serious conversation, the lot of them, like oiled up, you know what I mean, the whole deal. And they're like having a conversation. And the one guy's kind of like doing like push ups and the other guy's uh-huh. talking. Get a it's pump like, on. It looks like they're going over like a script or something, you know what I mean? And then what you think, like they, they're professionals. They got to coordinate. Yeah, they, they got to coordinate. I was just thinking, yeah, sure. They got to practice Makes at some sense. point. Yeah. And it's like they're totally freestyling when they go to these parties. Yeah. They're paid. The funny part, though, to me was at some point they broke off. All held hands and like lowered their heads and closed their eyes like they were praying. Yeah. And I'm like, are they praying before their performance for this bachelor party? Praying for a good show. So I think about that a lot. <laughs> I really like the idea of them like, all right, huddle up, boys. All right, boys, come on now. Come on. Boys, gather around. Dear Lord. <laughs> Bless Dear us. Dear Lord, let us look pumped on this. Bless event. these hogs. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. I, I think about it a lot. I think, And I also like the dichotomy of me being able to see that party them not being able to see these men preparing mm-hmm. and then the way they're dressed and then to still be that laser focused. It's both impressive and fun at the same time. It felt like it was rear window. See, that's, uh, that, that's, that's a fun aspect of the city. Yeah. <laughs> it's my Alfred, Alfred Hitchcock. That's good. That, that's a fun part of a city, bro. You do there's get to stuff, witness a lot, man. You see on. a lot of a lot of people watching. Just a lot of well, people Well, there's like watching. a lot happening and there's nowhere to hide, really. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you're just kind of out in it a lot. Yeah. Like if you want to see people having outside arguments like full relationship arguments that you keep behind closed doors you just go to new york all day up and down the streets just people having arguments that should be happen at an apartment Boy, outside. why they just don't care where else are you gonna go i guess yeah. you can always go back to the apartment it's a yeah. whole thing you gotta ride all the way back not having the conversation yeah. until you get there and be like okay <laughs> okay you know what i mean yeah, yeah. it's not just people having like arguments all the time yeah arguments on the phone arguments out you know what i mean because yeah. you know if you have a roommate you don't want to be up there there's just people i like it yeah, no, I just someone as as a natural voyeur of hearing other people's drama mm-hmm. and then immediately forgetting it. It's a dream setup for me. Yeah. So Hey, have you watched any couples therapy, by the way? Because we're back in it. No. Because Love is Blind and Bachelor's oh, back, yeah. so you know. Yeah. I'm back in that flow. Hey, it makes sense. Of me not fully paying attention, like walking in like w- watching it, commenting a bunch until Abby says stop talking and then yeah, I walk yeah. out of the room DJ, and then I come no. back. Stop. Stop Talk more. There's a lot going on in those shows right now. So yeah. no, I've not yeah. I haven't been digesting much stuff because it's mostly me walking around the house, blowing my nose, yeah, being mad that I'm sick, talking about different ways I'm going to cut off my nose, body parts, because <laughs> I don't want them anymore. I'm serious. I'm going to just do it. And then going to bed early because yeah. I'm mad. Yeah. I don't feel good enough to do anything I normally do. Yeah, so, no, I feel you. Just a lot of that lately. Yeah. It's not super fun. Yeah, so. I feel you, dude. Okay. So let's, uh, let's answer some uh, customer questions here. Let me just bring them up. All right. Okay, here's one. Mm-hmm. I don't exactly know how to put this into context. So yeah, we'll have gotcha. to put some context to it, but the question's interesting enough. Chambray versus denim. Mm. I don't know if it's a question of what's the difference. I don't what know. What tastes it's... better? Depends on how it's dyed. I would say. Uh, <laughs> I mean, and that takes me to the next. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, I'm doing yeah, the. Yeah, 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 yeah. You guys can't see me. I'm doing the thing where I put my eyes up like I'm calculating something. Yeah. Uh, um, let me see. <laughs> I uh that's very that's topical. It's funny that this is a question that's asked because I wear that EG denim work shirt all the time. And we just recently got in those lightweight chambray ones and I've been having a mental because that are one they that too you similar? Wear almost doesn't feel like denim. How do you define I don't know how, to be honest with you, I think I guess, there's probably a lot of different very like yeah, how you actually no, like the I hear what you're saying. Cuz I cuz you're right. What what you're saying is like think of like a like a Ralph Lauren polo that's denim. It's denim. Do you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah, like, I, like. But for example, I've so never personally, not never. I prefer denim to a chambray. If you're talking about a shirt setting, you mm-hmm, know what I mean. Mm-hmm. I like the thicker nature. You almost wear it like a jacket. Mm-hmm. 
that's that's me though. You know what I mean? Like um, a chambray is also an, it, it's a lighter weight, which is almost like linen. Would you me. say a chambray is like fifty percent denim, fifty percent regular cotton? What what would you? How would you equate that in your brain? It, it's more. I think it's about the way it's woven, not so much hmm. about the material necessarily, yeah. but. You know, it's it's really just that it comes down to chambray is a much lighter weight. It's a, it's a like a looser weave. Yeah. And denim is a much tighter weave. Okay. I think that, I think that's how. I guess I'm thinking about this live on air, and I know I've looked this up before. Now I can't really think of the actual, mm-hmm. but I believe that it, that it's woven. Now Here it's a question go. that's always buzzed around in the back of my head. Shout that out to answered. the guy who's definitely going to be like, technically speaking, blah blah blah. And you're like, all right, <laughs> all right, buddy, take you off know, your Allen Edmonds in the house. We know, yeah, we we know what the question is. Yeah. We know what the question is. You like a, you want like a little lighter weight. You like a little heavier. Weight, <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean, yeah, that's, yeah, that's the question yeah, that's yeah. being asked. You yeah, because at the end of the day. Even if you go, it's this and this, and it's done on this type of. It's like nobody knows what the hell that is. Like no one's seen that. How in do you life. feel it's in it? How does it fit you? Yeah. What do you feel good in? I think that it depends on what you need it for. Uh, here's my deal: if you want, if you want a chambray, I think I get it because it, lightweight, perfect throw over things in the summer. You get like a. It's almost like the denim jacket of the summer. Yeah, you know what I mean. Looks good with. You everything. still want to have a layer on, but you matches. Don't, yeah. It kind of to me, it feels a little linen-y when they're nice, and I yeah. think that's a nice thing, especially when it gets washed. Washes and, still yeah. ages, but not like denim because it's not going to do as much. But it still does some mm-hmm. natural aging. I don't know. It's like when you want to throw it underneath things too. Like I not often going to a denim shirt for that because it's a little too heavy. Yeah. So it's mostly just like it's like a, you wear it like in replacement of an Oxford. It's like a yeah. it's like the workwear version of an Oxford. You that, know what I mean, that's a good way of putting it. So. That's how I view it. Yeah. And then you go to the denim shirt if you want it to be more of that kind of like jacket sort of mm-hmm. thing. Mm-hmm. I tend to not, I don't put much stuff underneath stuff. You're mostly a, a t-shirt and a jacket or a or a, a long sleeve shirt and a t-shirt. Like you're, you're saying you're not typically. I'm not a big layerer, I guess not, is kind of no. the answer. You know what I mean? I think that like, because I like, I think it's mostly because I like stuff a little bit looser. So it doesn't always work yeah you know what i mean unless yeah. it, unless you're going really big you know like goopy shit you know what i'm talking mm-hmm, about like mm-hmm. unless no, you're going you're big big it's kind of hard to do Not i mean think really about me. like the hoodie you got on today really is dope it's a blank you said it's a blank basically fits exactly like the viz hoodie that i'm wearing right now my thing is if i try to put this underneath stuff it's so roomy and yeah. boxy it gets weird in the armholes so yeah, it's not ideal it for- is kind of it's not Which necessarily I, the best the layering is, hoodie. And that's like the, the Visvum fit is really, I like that fit on, 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 on almost everything, to yeah. be honest with you. So I'm just not a big layerer in that yeah. way. So I don't go to things too often for that. It's kind of why I struggle with shirts, I think, just because I don't ever know what to do with them yeah. know, outside of the summer. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I just, I just don't do a lot of that thing. So that's why I think that's why I'm a denim guy and not a chambray guy. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, I feel you. But on you, you're on the fence here. I'm on the fence. To be honest with you, I like any any blue shirt button up shirt chambray oxford denim i think that that's like a perfect thing to put under a chore coat under a under a hoodie even looks cool in some situations under whatever you've got it's a cool way to break up you know the color of the pants and the color of the jacket and then you got a little pop of blue coming out it's mostly inoffensive with anything i i like to have them on deck i have the denim work shirt i wear often and then like i said i'm trying to pick up the chambray maybe too I wear it a ton. Where do you think you're getting this from? I don't know. I, I think, I think like for instance, the fellow today from North Face, we had, we had some North Face fellows and we were talking footwear. I loved how he had the Nanamika striped Oxford underneath the jacket. I just think it, it, you get a little bit of play of how it sits around your collarbone. It, you get either like the pop of the t-shirt underneath, but then if it's long enough or you had that gusset, it just, Adds proportion, adds interest. Yeah, for me, that that's how I look at it. But specifically, blue I, or white's fine too. But like, it wouldn't do the same thing if it were say green or brown or blue is really the only way that I would wear a button up. Do most this. cases, I want you to do this. I'm interested in your answer here because I think what you're going to say is not necessarily what I believe you actually wear. But I want to see if you. Yeah, let's yeah, see. yeah. You're gonna you're you're making imagine this. You know how people will take like a picture from like something and they like Pantone the below. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Let's say I take a snapshot of your life. What's the pan? What's what's your Pantone below, clothes wise? Let's say it's four colors. It's it can't be endless. Olive, okay. White, black, olive, navy. Black, navy. Mm, More or less. Yeah. Um, yeah. But what would you add in there? Not because of the sweatshirt you're wearing, but you try to I you try I, to work in a, a like a red. I'm a lot. drawn to red quite a bit, but this still remains the only red piece I have. 
Really? Maybe you just wear it a lot. That's yeah. why I'm thinking yeah. about it. But I love I love it though. I wouldn't want it in any other color. Yeah. I am drawn to red. It's just I don't think I. I don't know. I haven't figured it out yet, but I like it. But in terms of my closet, I'm telling you, it's black, olive, navy, and <clears throat> white. Mm. I was gonna say also like maybe a navy. That's the only one I guess I was also vacillating on. Of like, eh, you do a lot of like lighter blues too, though. You know what I'm saying? Like like you're talking about that that denim shirt kind of. Mm-hmm. That mm-hmm. like a washed, a yeah. washed denim look. So, but even then, I will say the one I'm thinking of is a little, a little on the darker side. It's mm-hmm. not like chambray necessarily. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. But I think you probably could or should add that in because it would go with everything you're describing, like that color. Yeah, yeah. What's the color you most wish you could work in, but you can't? I think I have trouble with like browns. I don't have a Which lot of browns. Which is so funny to me because your your complexion, your your hair color, everything yeah. with like leans. It sh- you should be more in earth tones. Yeah, like yeah. that's like net, like for your complexion and everything. I well, look at like good. stylings and shit. And I like I really like that hoodie on you. I had a brown lady white hoodie, and I I found that I was like I don't know, it just doesn't look right with everything that I have. I feel like I'm, it's always anomalous. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, browns probably. You know, but like I wouldn't wear anything like a yellow or like a. You know, a yellow, a yellow I struggle with too. I feel like it. I feel like it washes me out. Maybe. Yeah. I don't feel comfortable in a yellow. I like yellow though. I'm, I'm attracted to it. Mm-hmm. I don't really buy it that much or anything, but I, I like mm-hmm. when I see it. I like it. Mm-hmm. I think that mine would be definitely still a black. Yep. Then, like I, I am a light blue because of cheese. Absolutely. Then probably like a taupe. Yeah. I don't know what my other color is, though. Those are my main ones. Like, that's my primary yeah. interest. I would have said beige, but taupe, taupe covers that. Yeah, beige or taupe is kind of... Yeah, same, yeah. yeah same you know, there. you wear a pop, though. You sometimes do wear, like, the red socks, or you have some mm-hmm. of the crew necks that are, like, a nicer burgundy red color. So I don't have, like, a, a solid one, though. You know what I'm saying? I was mm-hmm. trying to work navies and browns in more, because I always stayed away from them for so long. Yeah. Now I'm wondering if that was a mistake. Yeah. Cause I don't, I don't know. I just struggle with them. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. It just doesn't feel like my. It's not what you're reaching yeah. for. Yeah. I might have to do another reset. Already. Well, it's like that. Like we're talking about. It's like you know. I I feel like I'm always trying to work something new in, like whether it's a color, <coughs> or a style, whatever it is. It's mm-hmm. like oh, I need to work this, and I'm like, well, maybe I don't. Maybe I didn't need to do that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's very freeing to do a reset. It's very freeing just to give your shit away too. I'm also king of reset. Just to be clear, I've been resetting and oh, and I don't make any declaration. I'm just he just does it. (laughs) I promise you, I will reset after that too, and probably won't even take that long. Yeah, middle of the summer. Yeah, as soon as the weather changes and I have to like change the thing, I'll 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 change in some way, shape, or form. Mm -hmm. It'll be Mm -hmm. some new thing I get on. Yeah, I agree. I'm, I'm interested to, to see see what I get into this summer too. I like to think that I am easily inspired in a positive way. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so I'll see something. Like you'll and, see somebody yeah. pull a kit or... I'm like, oh shit. It's cool. You know what I mean? And I'm not trying to develop any sort of uniform. I don't care. Yeah. It'll be my uniform for that year or that season and then I'll change it. Mm-hmm. So I don't really care. But I do feel like I was trying to work in some colors that I'm like, why was I working so hard to like try to make that work? Like could have just bought one thing. I didn't need the whole... The they whole situation. Deep, yeah. You know? But what are you going to do? Yeah. I've been trying to do browns, though. That was not that was one that I do feel good about. Yeah. I think I was weird about them going with black for so long. It's like, oh, that doesn't work. But then and then I saw pictures and stuff. I'm like, well, I see people regularly pulling that. Yeah, mix, and, cool. it's, and it looks good. Mm-hmm. So I don't know why I was in my head about it. Yeah. You know, you just, you know, you get stuck sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. You feel stuck in any way? Clothing-wise? Mm-hmm. No, no, not really. I feel good about my wardrobe right now. I'm going to pick up another pair of Orslos today. You said the last time you didn't do it. I'm going to do it today. I need, I need to try them on. I'm trying to decide if I want a three or four. If I want to bump up. I think you just want to go four, bro. That's what you, I've done that and never looked back. Number one, because I want to wash and dry it right away. Yes. So I, I just don't want to worry about shrinkage. And my whole thing is I would rather things be a little big than a little small anymore. Yeah. Like I don't want to, I don't want to have to like wash them and go, ugh, the first wear is going to suck. I hate, I hate you know that I mean? feeling, dude. I think what I'm going to, I'm going to try, I'm going to put on the fours and, and side cinch and see, cause you know, I got that thing. I'm not going to wear a belt. I'm not going to wear a belt. Feel, it makes me not feel good. I don't like how it makes me feel on my hips, my legs. I don't like it. 
I don't like having a belt on. So my pants got to fall where they're going to fall. So if the fours side cinched can fall fine and don't look dumpy or aren't falling off me, then I'll probably do that. Because I do want a full green leg. Well, and you can also just hem them too if they're feeling like yeah. too long because of that. Because the yeah, four is no definitely too long. That's but no that's kind of like my thing is like I don't really I, – I almost want – a pant to be a little too long because I'm going to hem it and then it'll actually be like wider at the leg opening mm-hmm. than it was because even if it has a little taper to it. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, the the one on ones, the beams, uh, or slow clubs we got in Kyoto, those fit you great. Those are perfect. Oh, yeah, that, that fit. And that's I, got the, I got the one wash too. Yeah. Probably need to get other stuff in it because that, that, that fits really nice. Yeah. Especially if you've got like a little bun on you or a little hip yeah, on you, yeah. it, it sits nice. You know what I mean? Because it still does the baggy thing without it doing like. Where it like flares out, yeah. You know I mean, it, no, it, like, I feel it you. has like a like kind of that '60s curve to it in a nice way, where sometimes that's kind of hard to pull in yeah. like jeans and shit. So for some reason, this these work great. Yeah. So if you're feeling like that, but she's want to pull a ba- like a baggier fit, this is a good option. Yeah, completely agree. Yeah. Plenty roomy without being like terribly so. Yeah. We'll hem them for you too. Believe it or not. You talk to him about that. I'm not hemming anybody's pants. Yeah, I know. He's done hemming. He's done I will hemming. say I know. How I, 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 I've i locked in how to do same hem on stuff. Like, you know, oh, keep you, original you, hem. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's like this little cheater's way I learned recently. Yeah. And it might not be like perfect. You know what I mean? But you can't tell, dude. Yeah. Once you iron it down and like set, set it, it's... Yeah. You've, you've seen me wear those like denim painter pants around. I know what you're talking ones. about. Yep. Those ones have it on there. Yeah, next time you have them on, I want to see. Yeah, but fact that you've not noticed it's not Mm-mm. so it's not even screaming Mm-mm. i hemmed four yesterday bro four pairs of pants what were they two pair of iron hearts pair of, pair of studio de artisans de artisans de what denim and uh uh one-on-ones mm. pair of one-on-ones or 107s for a fellow in the one wash all, all the same guy no all oh. different guys believe it or not i was gonna say that was one guy i can tell you which ones he's gonna wear the most <laughs> It ain't all those other ones. It it's gotta be those one on ones. <laughs> it's like I'll, I'll be honest, dude. I had to on Friday. I tried to uh, hem those iron hearts. I think it was one less twenty one, one's twenty three, mm-hmm. and twenty. That's too much. Twenty three is too much. And 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 it's a little slimmer of a, of a, of a pant. So the leg opening is tight. So getting it to run that thick material, that tight of a leg opening. You know what I'm saying? It hardly goes around the however much space the machine has allotted for it to make the full three sixty. Crazy. Hey, listen. You want to do heavy denim? Uh, you want to do like do like like sell you know proper selvage the whole you know mm-hmm. weird warp weft blah 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 blah. More power to you, brother. Mm-hmm. Like I think it's if you've stuck cool, with it this long, good. you're OG. Yeah, do your cool. thing. I think there. I think there's a lot of cool information there. I get how you get kind of hooked yeah. on it. I was totally pilled for a long time. But when you get into weights being over 21, eight, honestly over 18. That's psycho shit. What are we doing? Brother, I've got, I had bruises on the back of my knees from like 13 and a half ounce rigid. So it's like, I know, I know you're not comfortable in those, my man. I know you're not. They don't like, they soften, but like they have no give. Like when you, when you sit, I just remember having to like, you sit down like in the car. Oh, if I did, what, you could drive 20 minutes? You're like, no way. Gotta go change my pants. Mm Mm-hmm. Can't feel like you this? feel like bloated. You feel like you got a bowling ball in your belly like because the pants figure. are so tight, bro. You know yeah, I mean? like you know how their legs go. It I know exactly. Like, like my legs go straight <laughs> exactly out if I sit down. I know exactly yeah. what you're saying. I don't know. Well, whatever you want to do, you can do. But yeah. The heavy. I just don't understand the heavy. Like the heavy going up, especially beyond 21. I just don't know what you'd be doing. And what are you paintballing in them or something? What are you trying to? What are you <laughs> yeah. trying to avoid? You know what I mean? We like should I, do a paintball retreat, bro. Let's shut down the store on a Sunday. Let's all go whoop each other's ass out in a field somewhere. There's got to be a hundred paintball arenas in the in the greater Boulder, Denver area. Yeah, I haven't done that in a long time. Man, I'll tell you what. No joke. Swear to God, the most sore I've ever felt in my entire life was the day after paintballing. I swear to God, I've never been more sore. I don't know if I was just running funny because I had all my shit. You know what I mean? But I couldn't stand up straight, dude. Like I thought my back had fully given out. We, I was really into it with my friends when we were like pretty young. And we would go out and pay this. I think I've talked about this on the podcast. Pay this little fellow Antonio to let us run around his woods. Right. So over, yeah, overcharge us for yeah. paintballs and stuff. And yeah. hell yeah, he'd bring his like nephew. His yeah. nephew would like lead the expedition, and then it was basically like twenty thirteen year olds shooting wildly at nothing because we wouldn't move because we were afraid of getting hit. Uh huh. <coughs> Excuse me. That, like so, it's just like it was that. And then at one point. I thought we were kind of bad. We were kind of good at it. We were not good at it. And we went to like a more serious like indoor place. Yeah. 
you know, we had, we had at this point gotten into it and like spent money on like all the, the hopper the and mask the spins them around yeah, yeah. and all like, yeah. you know, all the, <laughs> yeah. Yep. And uh, we went out there, played everyone's. So basically, it's just like a draw. Like you play, you go in with a bunch of people and you just play different teams. Yeah, and gotcha. so you're a yep. team and then. So you went with like five guys and then you just play whoever other five guys. Basically, there's like these guys, adult guys who were way into this. And then they were just like, oh, we're just going to like get these kids out of here. And we played. Nobody moved. Like we got, we're so scared <laughs> of these guys. Yeah. You know what I mean? And th- they immediately take out most of the guys. I'm the only one left. I'm standing behind like a box. You know what I mean? Just going like, oh my God. Like I have no other option i was debating like do i just want to shoot myself in the foot like oh you got me you know what i mean i I don't (laughs) want to do this as i'm having this thought of like just taking myself out of the equation or just lying and saying i got hit and didn't this this like you know like a 40 year old guy yeah which is also like what are you doing guy yeah comes up with you know he's got one of the ones with a double trigger in the in the in the abs you know what i mean yeah my rib cage my rib cage on one side, I swear to God, still has like a little discoloration because it was like eight bruises on top of yeah, one. Because yeah. it was like, you know, it was like he put 40 into yeah, me bro. for yeah, no yeah, reason yeah. off yeah. that stupid auto loader. Yeah. And it just, I, I I know exactly how it feels in my head still. And it just, I, I think that was probably at the point where I'm like, I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah. What are we doing? Yeah. You know, sold all the stuff, got rid of all of it. Yeah. Airsoft was cheaper. We got really into Airsoft. Yeah, I was into it too. Uh, one one Just thing, a really le- dangerous thing when you think back on it. Oh, really? Eyes and dumb kids. You know how many times one of us would be like, "Oh shit, I thought you had a mask on." Yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Ding somebody in the cheek. Yeah. Two two things. One, uh, if this helps all of our listeners paint a picture of of where I'm from in Ohio and my family. My family for a short period of time had an uh, indoor airsoft arena. It was a uh, defunct greenhouse they bought that and they set it up for airsoft for a couple defunct seasons greenhouse. so um yeah bro did i ever tell you about the time we built a full airsoft fort and i'm talking like timbo like top like you know you know like uh, along the lake how typically like houses are up top and then it's about a hundred all a hundred feet drop and then there's the lake and there's usually so that whole area we had that was a trail and at the top of the thing we built like a tree fort like sniper tower like really up in this tree and then at the bottom of the hill same thing but bro like a ladder straight up a tree we built a platform 360 degrees around this tree probably 15 feet off the ground much higher than a basketball hoop off of scraps that we found or we dissembled my buddy's mom's if you like, ever expensive wanted chairs to, if you ever wanted to know boy math the the uh, other version of girl math you just listen to a just a, a whole sentence full of it <laughs> it's it's 15 feet up a little higher than a basketball hoop blah, blah. it's like oh my god <laughs> everything you're saying is just that's boy math dude it's literally it's it's the same as me being like that's like four or five chipotle burritos no yeah, thank you that's, buddy. that's how we that's you how know? we factors out how much things cost true to this day timothy i I think probably four or five times a day i think i'll hear something and be like somebody was just uh talking about oh you know the the next layer of atmosphere starts up this high and i was like i don't know man i can conceive how many basketball hoops that it's not that high you know what i'm saying like that's a number that i can wrap my head around (laughs) but uh Anyway, we we built these forts crazy. I'm not I'm not lying. It's some, disassembled my my friend's mom's nice ass chairs. They lived in a four car garage that overlooked the lake kind of house. We took apart these chairs. It just they again, were the probably like, mat here is <laughs> they could fit four cars in their garage. So you can imagine how wealthy they are. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what I'm communicating yeah. too. You know, uh-huh. but um, then the the commons community decided they didn't like the fort there anymore because we were littering it with you know airsoft pellets and that. Shocking. Yeah. I think I think I said this on the pod actually, but long story short, went up to this guy's house said, "You burned down our shit. You owe us money." He didn't. He didn't pay us. He was a full grown adult. We were at thirteen, so we just like egged and TP'd his house badly, and that was how we got our payback. So, anyway, you're on you're onto something here though. The boy math thing makes sense. How do you equate things? Like if I said, you know, it's about thirty yards away. How would you? Because I if thirty yards, you can conceive because it's a football field. But let's say it's thirty feet. How do you think? 30 feet in the air. Yeah, let me answer this question. Here's Well, okay, there's two ways. I'm going to answer the question two different ways. Number yeah. one, I've said a million times when people tell me directions <laughs> yeah, or tell me like, oh, man, that, that's like, you know, Quarter mile. like two, two, two football fields from here, blah, blah, blah. And I, immediately when people, I'm like, the information doesn't matter to them, nor does it matter to me. <laughs> yeah. Because that, what they just said is not accurate. Well, I can't picture it and don't care. So it's never important to the story. 
Yeah. Someone telling you that information in any like normal like conversational story, yeah. Yeah. the math part does not matter yeah. at all. You know, I mean, it's just like when people are telling me, oh, you're just taking east on the street. I'm like, motherfucker, no. tell me which side the Wendy's We're is on, and then now I know yeah. where I'm at. You know yeah. what I mean? And yeah. now we can yeah. proceed amicably. You've heard me say, absolutely, you've heard me say, like, that's about, oh, shit, I mean, if you got a good golf swing, that's two two strokes from here. <laughs> I know as soon as you went, I go, oh, the, inf- the information doesn't <laughs> yeah. matter because it's fake anyway. You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't, it's no matter, there's no reason to go forward with yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. The one thing I'll that's say funny. is when you said 30 feet, that does hit because... There was a there was a thing we went to. It was called something Lake. I can't remember what some oh, generic I, name. Yeah, and there were diving platforms. Yeah. And I just think back now, and I'm like, there is no way some like imbecile hillbilly in in Indiana was figuring out how deep does this need to be if they were going to build a 30 yeah, foot yeah, platform yeah. for kids they to push doing each the other off of. For it. Yeah, yeah. No one voluntarily jumped off that thing. You went up to the edge, especially if you were little, and some adult kid that was up there would push you off every <laughs> single time i never jumped off of it voluntarily yeah, ever yeah. i got pushed off and you can imagine it's 30, 30 feet you, if you land the wrong way bro. you're gonna hurt yourself yeah we landed the wrong way every single time <laughs> every single time so in in that scenario at this lake uh-huh. there was there was a few different things there was the 10 foot diving board which looked like a normal diving board mm-hmm. that one wasn't you know that was nothing yeah then there was 20 feet and that was pretty scary yeah 30 feet was very scary so I can, if you say 30 feet, I can go, okay, 30 feet. I know how tall that is because I know how okay. See? tall that diving board was. But that's the, that's the, that's the math you do in your head. Have I told the, have I told anything about Pine Lake before? I'm really hoping this is my Kleenex. We've right. talked about Pine Lake. You, you and Abby and I have definitely talked okay. about it. There was also a, on the same platform at the top of the platform, the 30 foot diving, if you didn't go off the 30 foot diving board, I'm sorry, if you didn't get pushed off the 30 foot diving board by a kid with a bowl cut and a chain <laughs> with like a shark tooth on the end yeah, of it, yeah. <laughs> then, then you were going to get, then you went down this, uh, I forget what it was called. I think it was called the black mm. hole. It was a slide that was black yeah. in nature. First of all, you can in imagine it. in summer it gets things gets cooking. Yeah. It is the hottest material I've ever touched. It was, my, it made, it was, it was made of tar yeah. at, at a certain <laughs> point in July. And, he would go down it. When you were down it, you couldn't see anything inside of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Now, the thing is, they would say, lay back on your back and like do a cross on your yep, chest. Yep, yep, yep. Don't lift your head up because there's stuff in there. And I think back now, I'm like, why is there stuff in there? <laughs> why would there be stuff in there? So, and it, it was kind of always like, yeah, it's just like a safety thing. They yeah. just want you to stay on your back or whatever. Yeah. My friend lifted his head up during the middle of it, came down, you saw blood come out first of like, you know, the oh washy God, stuff at, yeah, the, at the end. And we're like, oh shit, someone died. And then it was like, he comes shooting out into it and he came out with a gash in his head. There was basically just like a loose screw coming out Dude. the top of it. And he put like this huge, he still has a scar on his head. He can't grow hair in one part. Insane. Because of the black hole. Dude. What? That's what makes me believe there's no chance they measured was thir- like how deep is this compared to that 30 foot dive if someone pencil dives into this thing again no one ever did because you only got pushed off of it so you landed yeah. on your yeah. side and then had like a welt uh-huh, uh-huh. Um, and uh, <laughs> but there's no way they measured to see if that was safe because they didn't even they weren't even taking screws out they were just yeah. like lay on your back and don't look up and it'll be fine absolutely insane insane that's Indiana buddy it, this was just out in the middle of nowhere you get yeah. in a school bus coming from the Kikianga school and then just it was a group of kids you don't know and then you got beat up all day. You know what I mean? That was that was the whole the whole bit. I also remember my friend one time was on the low diving board. Fuck. He practiced all year long because he had a pool in his backyard. He practiced all year long doing a backflip yeah. like a nice one. Hell yeah. And he could do it. I've seen, He could do it. He gets out there and he's like, I'm going to show this girl that he liked, Brooke. He's like, I'm going to show her I can do that backflip. Like off the 10 foot. And he's like, I'm doing it off of blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, you know, whatever he had at home. And I'm like, all right, run it up. Yeah, do, do it. I'm, I remember sitting at the end of that diving board. He, Brooke's in line with us. He's teed this up just right. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, Brooke, here he goes. He can do a backflip. She's like, okay, well, it's, we'll see. We'll see. He does the backflip, <laughs> doesn't come off the diving board. Just does a full clean backflip, <laughs> boom on top of the, and you know what that top of that diving board feels like, uh, like uh-huh. Saint, like a uh-huh. grip tape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, the fiberglass is wearing through. He stands up, bro, after a minute because he like turn. You know, like you know those like little like a, uh, it's like a guy on strings and it's like elastic. And you push the button on the bottom, it collapses. Oh, I know nothing. what you're talking about. Yeah, that's yeah, what his body. <laughs> that's what his body looked like. It was just like a little mess of bones and skin. He was weighed like a you know 76 pounds. Yeah, yeah. And uh, when he stood up, he was white. He was white like you, like a translucent spider. <laughs> And he had cuts 
everywhere. Every part of his body had like was skinned up. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like had the white skin with pink showing. <laughs> yeah, Brooke looked mortified because it was kind of it was a lot to take in. There was nothing. We went to the, the like infirmary or whatever, which yeah. was run by like you know one guy who you know done mushrooms that morning. Yeah. And uh, they were like, we don't know. They like sprayed him with Bactine or whatever, yeah. whatever that stuff is. Yeah. And he just screamed because I'm sure it like oh, killed. Oh, dude, yeah. And then just he stood, stood on the steps that you had to take to leave just until the day ended. <laughs> Four <laughs> hours on yeah. the steps, just yeah. baking in the sun, cuts everywhere. God, dude. Shout out Pine Lake. No, it has to be out of operation at this point. Yeah. It's not, though. You know it's still going. <laughs> dude, but, well, d- did you see? There's a documentary. might be on HBO. It's it's in New Jersey. Oh yeah 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 yeah. yeah. Chris Gethard is part of it. Yeah, that yeah. water park. Yeah, it kind of yeah. sounds like that. It's got similar energy, but like less funded. Yeah oh, yeah okay. I was gonna say Other than that, more DIY. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah more <laughs> DIY. You gotta come out to this DIY water park. Hell yeah. Me and my friends set it up. Hell yeah. Honestly, that seems like something that you and I would do if we owned property like you. Oh owned. brother. Yeah, we absolutely ruin We've nature talked- by putting a shitty water park. It's just like a tarp with Vaseline on it. Oh yeah. Oh, luber right up. <laughs> We've talked about uh, wanting to buy some property, and b- buddy, we're putting a zip line on it. So <laughs> watching you, when it kind of like it dips too low, <laughs> get your butt on the on the grass, <laughs> skin my knees all <laughs> fucked up. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Pull my pants idea of you getting your cargo shorts pulled off of the grass on a zip line i just don't let go all right that's that's legendary shout out (sighs) shout out your us our our property yeah mountain sea chase poorly zip line across of it yeah yeah if we do i think we need i think if we ever buy this little piece of property together Uh Which I'm, I don't think, it, more and more, I think this is a bad idea for you and I. But if we ever do it, I think that we should get a situation kind of like a, like a, who are those two dipshit brothers that used to make YouTube videos until the one filmed in the Japanese <laughs> Suicide Garden or whatever? What? what are those two guys called? One's a, one's, one does boxing or whatever now. The two dumb brothers from YouTube. From Cleveland? I don't know. I don't know where they're the, from. Would make sense. The, the one that are boxers and shit. That's what I just said. <laughs> yeah. What the fuck? Uh, it doesn't. Jake. Matter. They're from Cleveland, man. So better or for worse. They had the song where it was like, "It's every day, bro." <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Sucks man. so bad. It's <laughs> rules. <laughs> anyway, uh, I want to. I want to. We, we like. We basically start a hype house, but it's like. It's like the hillbilly hype house. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> where we build poorly designed zip lines and do boy math and yeah. <laughs> I'd do that. I want to do uh I want to do a segment for the pod where we go to a high dive here in Boulder. The university somewhere has to have a big platform for me to jump off I'm into an indoor now. pool. No chance. Okay, I'll let you do, do it, it with me. Gia yeah. would do it. No. She's Gia's weirdly she's into weird stuff but she's like cautious. Yeah. She'd be down to like hype you up. She's yeah. not going to do it. No. She, <laughs> you got no cheddar. Yeah. She didn't even like jumping in the pool off the side of the thing. Too much, too much yeah. adventure. She wants to watch me, she wants to like throw things in the pool and watch me go get them. Yeah, like I'm a dog. Yeah, <laughs> so that's more of her vibe. Yeah. All right, we let's let's wrap this up. Hold on, hold on. Talk? One thing just before we wrap up, I Can't wanted to shout out Wabi this. Sabi. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. He he did acquire good. us the tea. In fact, he was who recommended we go to that restaurant in Kyoto. Uh, the tea that we had in Kyoto, he was there with either his sister and mom was there long story short he has the tea from that restaurant he sent us what he had remaining i'm happy to report it is spot on i have not had it yet it's not because i don't waiting to get through i just i just want to i can't i can taste but it's not great right now so because my nose is all clogged up so i just want to wait until i'm out of the weeds and i and i want to save it because then i'm then i'll have to buy more i'll figure out how to do that yep but that's solvable order yeah but um but yeah shout out because i i smelled it and it's definitely correct when you smell there's no way whoa yeah, yeah, that's it. Couldn't be closer to it's. The it's got cigarettes. the smell of like, like a cigarettes in a car that like has a Chevy been Cavalier out, that that's been sitting out in the sun for a little while. Yeah. and I know that sounds bad, but it's not bad. I don't no, know how to explain. A, it. It's it, it's it's. I, I'm not gonna act like I it's know more it. like that's the nose of the whole thing, which has this weird like nostalgic thing for me. And then the taste is kind of like there's a quite clean. savory nature to yeah. the taste, even too. Like it's not a sweet taste. No. But I like it. So anyway, shout out. Thank you, Wabi. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much for sending that. Thank you. We are very, much. very stoked I on it. I will report back once I taste it, but I'm sure it's it. So mm-hmm. yeah. that, that was about it. Just wanted just to throw some love there. Yeah. Appreciate you. So 
and everyone involved in whatever things that we're doing. Yeah, if you're so, still listening, thank you. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, go if you're not already. Sorry, pop we're on late on the this. Patreon. The sickness is really killing us here, but we're we're getting, yeah, we're getting we're getting through. We got good guests lined we, up, like we talked about. We've just been uh, you know finally a got slow. finally got back on the on top of the guest scheduling. That'll become more regular. Me and Timbo just need to be better about doing the pot either earlier on a Tuesday or on Monday. Listen, well, there's a lot of moving parts here, and uh, a lot of the time there's more work than the heads in this building can shoulder. So we're 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 thank you for listening. <laughs> yeah, follow us on YouTube, Patreon, Discord, Patreon.com slash shop Instagram. He's got that one. I don't. We don't know the other ones, but if you look Canoe Club up on YouTube, we're going to be the ones followed by probably some. I think it's all shop Canoe like, Club, bro. Good. So take that. Not allowed to have any sort of canoes anywhere. No Yakimas like that guy that used to call all the time. Y'all got Yakimas? I told you like eight <laughs> times we don't have them. Yeah. <laughs> we're your canoe shop. It's yeah. like, why are we having this? Yeah. yeah. Anyway, shout out Yakima. Shout out Yakima. Thank you. Have a good day and talk to you soon.